Gamers and Backlogs. A battle where backlogs tend to have the upper hand, with the list of games you want to play constantly piling up. Being backlogged is like a condition, one that varies, ranging anywhere between, darn, I haven't played the last two Zelda games, to a full-on logjam. It's a condition you can't see a doctor for either. Best you can do is listen to some fool's advice online. Glad to be of service, I may or may not be suggesting bananas. Now, right away, some folks will say defeating your backlog is easy. Just play your games. Well, saying how to do things is usually easier than actually doing them. Want to backflip over your couch? Just gotta fully commit, remember to tuck your legs, and voila! Yeah, there's always more to it, isn't there? If backlogs were easy to get under control, there wouldn't be so many people who still have ones out of control. Because wanting to play games is easier than actually playing them. It's hard to do all the things you want to do. I want to ride in a banana car driven by a floppy-eared dog. The way I see it, there are two main things working against you when it comes to backlogs. Time available and passion for games. You like something more than your limited free time will allow you to. So, the first order of business is to free up some more time and wait a minute, lot of time getting sucked up by sleep. So, we get rid of it, right? Well, after some testing, I think we can cross that one off the list. After all, another problem is just being too doggone tired to play your games, and lack of sleep isn't going to help that. Quick little scenario for you that I bet most of you can relate to. So there you are, at the end of the day that you've somehow made it through. Everyone's asleep, everything's done, and you've finally got some free time, a time I like to call the time when the world stops. Time to play some games, but uh Oh, you're too tired from your big day. Time to lean on an old comfort, staring at your games until it's time to go to bed. Well, it was good while it lasted. But hey, there's always tomorrow night. Maybe you'll actually choose a game to play this time, which can be part of the problem, just making a choice. My suggestion is to choose what you're going to play before before it's time to actually play. And this can happen at any point in the day. This might look like me agreeing with somebody on the phone, but it's actually me deciding I'm gonna play some Faxanadu later that night. If you wait until it's time to actually play to make the decision, the pressure could just be too much, resulting in what many of you like to call game choice paralysis. Not to mention the potential time wasted mulling it over. It's important to make the most of the time you do have because the truth is, for most people, trying to figure out how to create even more free time for themselves isn't realistic. You've likely already tried to maximize your free time. Is there anything you do that you don't feel like you either want to do or have to do? Probably not, so you'll just have to make do with the time you have, which makes for my next tip try to realistically only start games that you know you'll finish the first time you start it. Otherwise, that game will find itself on a list that is arguably even more nefarious than a backlog. That's right, the dreaded mid-log. Games that you only got to the middle of before abandoning for just pick a reason, there's a lot of them. When you step away from a game for a while, it can be difficult to refamiliarize yourself when you come back. Depending what type of game it is, maybe you can't remember where the heck you are or what you're doing, what was happening in the story, it might seem more simple to just start over, meaning you'll have to spend time getting all that progress back. But I think what can become even more problematic is when this turns into a cycle. Getting excited to fire up new games. What are you, crazy? You still haven't finished the last game you were in the middle of. You know, the one you were just excited to start playing not that long ago. And oh, how things have changed since you were a kid, am I right? When many of us were kids, 
we had far less games. The games we did have, we often played to death, and we'd be chomping at the bit to get our hands on a new game. The excitement, the anticipation. Now when a new game comes out, you might be thinking, ah, oh, great, another long game for the backlog. That's not right. Getting excited for a game should be just that excitement and not mixed with feelings of guilt and trepidation about how you're going to actually play it. Life is hard. What's the point of it all if you can't even play a gosh darned video game you're excited for every now and then? That said, you do still got to be realistic about how many games you can play. Try to think about how long a game would take to beat. I always look games up on howlongtobeat.com and with your schedule in mind, how long it would take you to get through a game of that length. So, for example, last December I planned to play Super Mario Wonder and Spider-Man 2. In Mario Wonder, I wanted to do all the side stuff in 100% the game. In Spider-Man 2, I just wanted to finish the main story. So, with maybe two to three hours to play each night, minus about seven days due to holiday stuff going on, minus another seven days or so because I'd rather stay up late doing other stuff like watching movies with my sweetie pie, and it was pretty pretty easy to conclude that December could only allow for those two games. Don't even think about other games till January. And it worked. Quick little trick for you. When you're playing a game and your mind starts to wander to another one, slap your face. Here's me after beating Tears of the Kingdom. Beat your face, beat a game. But don't actually. In fact, don't do anything that might hurt you that I do in these videos. Grab a nanner, they're good for you. Now, when I talk about needing to be realistic about what you can play in a given month or so, this can of course also apply to, yup, the rest of your life. And hey, you might have already thought about this a little. I've heard many of you say that once you're really old and retired, you're gonna finally catch up on your games. And why not take it a step further? When I'm even older and in my grave, I won't have any responsibilities getting in the way. I've always said that I'd finish Ninja Gaiden in my grave. And as drastic as it might sound that you need the entirety of the rest of your life to finish your back log, for some folks, doing the math, even with a very optimistic life expectancy, eat your nanners. With how many games you have on your backlog, it could take your entire life. Heck, maybe even a few lifetimes. Whatever the case may be, point is, lots of us have big ol' honkin' backlogs that are gonna be tough to get through. In which case, what could really be helpful is to just get rid of some of them. But hold on a second there. As much as I believe consolidating your collection of games, physical copies or not, could be helpful. I mean, they don't call me Mr. Consolidation for nothing. Actually, I only call myself that. But open invitation, feel free to call me that. But as much as I believe consolidating could be helpful, you may not have to. When talking about trying to finish your backlog, I think it's important to ask the question, what happens if you never finish your backlog? And the answer is nothing. Can you imagine somebody responding to a funeral invitation with this? Plus, it's kind of hard to finish your backlog if you never get your game back. You're never getting it back, Timmy. So here's a suggestion I have. Whether consolidating your collection would help or not, simply view your backlog in a different way that makes it seem not so big and daunting. No, not like that. Just don't view it as a source of pressure. Rather, view it as a list of games you might like to play. Play the ones you feel the urge to play, and the rest of them, to hack with them. The key is to just get comfortable with the reality of the situation. For a lot of people, they're hanging on to the unrealistic goal of actually finishing it. Unrealistic goals can break your heart. His name would have been Scooter and we'd drive to tropical locations and his ears would have flopped around in the wind. Set yourself free and let go of the idea that you need to finish your backlog in the current state it's in. Remember now, this is a hobby meant to bring joy. You can do it however you want. I know that for some people, when you consider the whole being a tired adult thing, 
they'd rather just watch somebody else play a game than play it themselves. And when nobody's looking, maybe even fast forward a little bit, you dirty dog. Not for me personally, but hey, if it makes you happy, I'm happy. Now, if you are interested in consolidating your collection, aka getting rid of games in a way that makes your collection better, or are simply interested in what I have to say about it, I'll have a video link in a pinned comment for you, as it goes hand in hand with a lot of what I've been talking about in this video. But the main idea is that you want to make room for the games you care about the most. If there are any games on your backlog that don't still seem exciting to play, then get them off of there. The point of a backlog isn't to give yourself chores, you do enough things that are hard to do already. The point of a backlog is to organize a list of fun stuff. You don't want to have games you don't care about taking away from the games you do. And perhaps more importantly, taking away from the time you have to play them. Not to mention the games that are some of your absolute favorites that goodness forbid you'd like to play through more than once, despite technically being crossed off your backlog. And the thing is, certain games are going to require being played multiple times in order to beat them, simply because they're difficult. If you've never played a game like, say, Battletoads, it's not as simple as just picking it up and spending the 50 minutes it takes to play through all the stages. It only takes 50 minutes after you've spent a bunch of time mastering the game. Here, I went ahead and corrected the how long to beat listing. These games, you know, hard games, are games that not everyone will feel they need to see the ending credits for in order to feel like they've played it. But if they are, I found that luckily you can mix these games in with the longer games you might be playing. What, you think I'm going to play through Spider-Man and not take the occasional break for some Rocket Knight adventures? They typically don't have deep stories you'll need to keep track of or complicated control schemes, so hopping in and out of them should feel very doable. That said, if you do want to actually beat these games, it does often help to just really dedicate a day or perhaps a weekend to really focusing on beating them. I mean, why waste a weekend doing something like renovating a bathroom when you could do something more productive like beating Contra without the Konami code for the first time? But there you have it, some of my tips as well as perspective when it comes to handling your backlog. However you use what I said, Hopefully, it can help you get more enjoyment out of your games and your backlog. Oh, and I've actually got one last little idea for you that somebody mentioned on one of my videos years ago, and everyone seemed to really like it. Treat your game collection like a mock rental store where you check games out and have to recheck them out to keep playing. Could help bring some focus to what you choose to play. And something kind of similar I like to do is to focus on a singular console for a month or two. But of course, as always, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on all of this. So with that, leave a comment down below and I will see you in the next video. He's the Red Cooper, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's the Red